A Stuart Models number 9 horizontal steam engine part 4. Looking at how well this engine is built, adjusting the eccentric sheave for the water pump operation. In a separate episode I described the making of this airline adapter because I didn't want the compressed airline to fly off complete with its metal clip and chip the paintwork. Before the test run I'm injecting some oil into this adapter which will lubricate the piston and cylinder. There's a bit of a puzzle with this valve on the top. It appears that the steam inlet is right on the top of the valve and this one on the side is where either the displacement lubricator fits or it's just an oil inlet from something like a mechanical lubricator. Here I've fitted the silicone rubber tubing complete with the spring clip and it's time now for a test run. First though I'm going to check the valve timing. Surprisingly the slide valve timing is late. But because this engine is so well made, it isn't really an issue at the moment. There isn't too much knocking going on. But as you can see, the steam or air in this case has been admitted after top dead centre. This Stuart No. 9 steam engine is really well made. The fits and tolerances are exceptionally good. The original plan was to build this into a steam plant. And when I reread the customer's initial email, I noticed that he wanted it building into a steam plant because he wanted to sell it. A quick phone call later and I bought the engine and the boiler and the condenser water preheater. I didn't really want the boiler or the condenser but I thought well it will come in useful for something. What I'm doing here is adjusting the eccentric sheave but not the one that operates the valve because that is actually perfect. This eccentric by the flywheel is the one that drives the water pump. And in my opinion the timing of this is not perfect. I would like the power stroke of the pump and the suction stroke of the pump to take place after the power stroke of the engine starts and not where it is at the moment. I removed the eccentric strap and took this grub screw out of the hole in the sheave. As you can see, this grub screw has a point on it which goes into a detent that is drilled in the crankshaft. I ground off this point and this is what the grub screw looks like now. Why didn't I use an ordinary grub screw? The answer is this grub screw was made by the engineer who built the engine and it's actually threaded 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch. In an earlier episode, one viewer commented about the fancy fitting on the flywheel. And this is a key. As you can see, there's a slot in the crankshaft and a slot in the flywheel. And you just tap the key very gently into place and it holds everything together. It's better not to do it the way that I've shown, using a hammer. A soft hammer would be okay, or I could even tap a piece of hardwood. The compressed air is admitted late at each end of the stroke. But the point of admission is exactly the same at both ends so I don't need to adjust the valve timing. As you can clearly see the engine does run rather well. The oil coming out of the cylinder is clear. The oil coming out of the bearings on the crankshaft, particularly the big end bearings, is quite black. So the engine is far from run in. This engine reminds me slightly of the one that used to be owned by the late Mr Fred Dibner. I spent a couple of afternoons with Fred, very memorable occasions. Fred was very special. What I'm doing at the moment is having a look at the general tightness of the nuts on the studs. Because there are one or two minor leaks, but after tightening up some of the nuts, the leaks disappeared. As part of the running in or breaking in process, I'm running the engine at various speeds. And now the time has come to speed up things a bit.
I notice that the governor is fairly inefficient, in fact it's not doing anything. I'll look at that in due course, but I'm not doing anything to this engine really until I've bought it. And that should happen this Friday. Here I'm alternating between medium speed runs and high speed runs. The engine sounds fine. I can't say I'm wanting to get inside the steam chest right this minute. Possibly as the engine runs in it will start to knock a little bit because the valve timing really is late. As I near the end of this video it's time for a bit more slow motion. I really do like this engine and I've never had a number 9 before. It's very powerful, quite surprising for such a small engine. But that may be something to do with the very large cylinder. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.